All right, so welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you how I organize my life with Notion. I constantly get comments about my Notion templates and databases, so I'll be breaking down the systems that I have in place, which are crucial for how I manage my time, my projects, and just how I stay on top of everything. But before we jump in, I do have a new update to my work area, which I wanna share. So let's jump into it and this is my notion setup so over time i've created various different databases and templates that help me do things like learning reading managing my software development notes and even creating content on this very channel but before we jump in i must say that this video is sponsored by notion but i'm genuinely excited about this sponsorship because it's a tool that i use and have been loving for about four years already and stick around because i am going to share a free software development roadmap template that i created which you may find pretty helpful. But first, a quick Notion 101. I wanted to quickly explain what Notion even is because I still see a lot of people asking this, which of course, that's fine. And it may seem confusing at the start because Notion is a pretty versatile tool that can be used for various different purposes. I like to think of it as a note-taking app at its core with lots of nice markdown and organization features. But where it really comes to life is with its database features, which allows you to structure all of your data or note taking in a very different way. For example, let's start with this simple to-do list and turn it into a database, which unlocks tons of different functionality. You can add new columns or properties to your tasks, add due dates, priorities, or assignees. Then with that same table of data, we can change it into a different view. If you don't wanna see your tasks as a table anymore, we can switch it to a calendar, change it to a timeline, or even a Kanban board to easily move things around. And there you go. From there, you can really take it as far as you like. You can customize it to fit your branding, turn it into a shared team list and work with others. Literally entire projects and businesses can be built from a simple Notion to-do list. So first up, I have this LeetCode Notion database. This is the template that I use to help me practice to crack the coding interview. As you may know, technical coding interviews involve solving various algorithm and data structure problems. But the main thing is that you don't wanna memorize these sets of questions and solutions. The goal is to be able to think critically and solve them. I found that using Notion to jot down my thought process helped me get so much better at these kinds of problems. So I created this reusable template where I can easily add the attributes to each problem. Here, I would define the problem. Here, I would write down my solution and thought process and I have a whiteboard space where I can draw or sketch out whatever I need, then a code block, and finally where I explain the time complexity of the problem. Next up, I'm going to dive a bit into my content manager page or workspace, which is what I've been using since my very first video on this channel. Much like movies, I really believe that at the core of creating good videos and good content, is good writing and planning. Good writing and brainstorming will really help you think about how you're going to convey emotion or explain your ideas in your videos. All right, so this is the home of my content manager page. And this is for sure one of my bigger pages, so sit tight. It's comprised of four major components, my projects, tasks, partners, and earnings tables. But let me show you what I like to keep on the home. So here I have a timeline of my upcoming projects. And for this timeline view, I actually have dependencies activated. That way I can get a quick idea on what's coming up. Then below that, I have a calendar view of my active project tasks. And these tasks are tied with a one-to-one -one relation to each project. So let's jump into the projects page. And my projects table, I have it grouped by status. So you can see I have my to-dos, my in progress, and my completed. My projects usually start here at the backlog. Then they enter the negotiation phase if needed. 
Then I mark them as in progress. Pre-production just means when I'm planning out the content. In production is when I'm filming and post-production is the editing stage. Then I mark the project as done, archived or canceled. So let me show you an example project. Here are all of those properties that I have and the tasks that are tied to that project. Also on my project table, I have a thumbnails view because thumbnails are a pretty important part of the entire process. And for each project, I just have two templates, a long form and a short form video. Let me show you the long form. So here I like to capture the main idea of the video and what kind of value I'll be providing. Here I kind of break down the different chapters and the different talking points. Here I have a B-roll list and I have a section for hooks. So actually, let me show you a project that's been completed. So here my main idea was to film a video of why I love being a software engineer. So here you can see my chapters, I have my intro and the different talking points and a scripted checklist of the different things that I will be mentioning. And at the bottom, I do like to add references of other creators who did a really great job with that video idea. And inside of my projects, I do like to make use of Notion AI to help me write my content scripts. I feel like it provides a really good starting point for the most part. Okay, so let's go back and look at the tasks table. And like I mentioned, these tasks are tied to a specific project. And here I just have status, pretty simple, and a due date. Then I'll show my partners table, which is pretty much like a simple or mini CRM of the brands that I've connected with. And finally, here's the earnings table where I show all the numbers and figures of the projects. Now, I am a bit hesitant to show this because I'm unsure if this would be, even be valuable to share, but I'll just show how I like to use Notion to track all of these figures. So I have it sectioned into different timeframes and I actually took this idea from the Robinhood app. So I get a fast and easy overview of the figures for that time frame. But yeah, let me know if you would like to see a deeper dive into this with something more like a salary and expenses video. So again, this was my very first year creating content on YouTube, but I've managed to get over 60,000 subscribers, which I think is a pretty good achievement having absolutely no experience. I really think it's possible for so many people and you can do this too by having the right systems in place. Next up, I'm going to talk about how I use Notion to manage my application development notes. And this isn't necessarily something official to our team and to our task management. For that, we use other project management tools. Instead, this is a simpler personal work log, which I found pretty effective. So for this database, I just have a couple properties, a tag for the project and the type of note, a reference date, and an AI summary, which is cool. I gave it a custom prompt to generate a one sentence summary for me. That way I can get a quick idea of the notes content. And let me open up an example stand up note for you. So here you can see I have my talking points, my pending action items, some potential blockers. Usually I have what my schedule is looking like and some discussion notes at the bottom to take during the meeting. And for my action items, something I'd like to do is to connect my linear or Jira issues and to use synced blocks. With sync blocks, I can quickly copy and paste them to a new note. So that way I can quickly copy over the task if I need to shift them around between the weeks. But a key thing here for me in this database are my page templates. For the most part, I try to keep them pretty simple because I don't want to be too distracted during my actual meetings. But let me show you some of these templates. So here's my stand up as you had already seen my sprint planning template, post-mortem template, my ad hoc team meeting template, which is more for one-off meetings, and my weekly work log that I like to keep. And here specifically, I have been getting lots of use of Notion AI using a beta feature called a Q&A, so I can ask you questions about my older notes, and it's really useful because I have hundreds of notes here and it's pretty hard to refer to all of them in the past. Here, for example, I'm asking it to give me a summary of my entire previous year, which it did a really good job for. And you get some quick link previews to see exactly where that information is coming from. All right, so since we're on the topic of software development, I thought I would just go ahead and share that roadmap template that I mentioned. This is a totally free template. I thought I would create this as a full stack developer myself, which gives you a general overview of what you have to learn. I've organized it into multiple chapters and modules and added some personal notes as well. The roadmap is pretty simple and unopinionated. 
and instead of being a full-on tutorial this will allow you to explore more of the content at your own pace which is also why I refrain from adding time estimates to the modules. I left that open space if that's something you want to track. So feel free to check out this roadmap down in the description if this is something that you're into. So now I'm going to share a couple pages which I'm not referring to daily. These are more like archive notes that I look at once in a while. Or a couple more experimental things where I like to try out new cool stuff. So this is my portfolio post CMS or a content management system. And this page was pretty fun creating. It started with the idea which I saw of using Notion as a portfolio and sharing your public link. But I feel like that approach leaves much to be desired such as customization and putting your own brand style. So I started testing and playing around with the Notion API to use Notion as a CMS where you write your content and Next.js website where you can customize how it's shown, which was surprisingly not too bad for setting up. So it's nice because you can add whatever properties you want. I added a check mark for a published or draft post, tags, and a description. Using Notion for Markdown and for taking your notes or writing your blog post is such a nice experience. But there are some limitations of Notion API that come in by surprise. One of them is that you can't upload your own images. You have to figure out the hosting for your images on your own. And this was such a turn off because you kind of have to rely on something else for that. So as you can see, now that image is broken. But if there's some kind of update for this, I may go back to using Notion and Notion API for my blog post. So this CMS template is also publicly available if you wish to check it out. And there's a link to my GitHub where I kind of show you more step-by-step -step on how to set this up. So then I have a personal finance page, which I believe it's good to set a simple budget and to track recurring expenses or subscriptions that you may have. I like it because you can make use of table calculations and add categories or tags, but I kind of stopped using it. Honestly, I don't think Notion is good enough to get more granular with things like personal finance. Because of course, money coming in and out is not always the same. So trying to track this on Notion on your own can get pretty tedious. Now, there are plugins to add transactions, information, and your accounts using Plaid, but I prefer to just keep personal finance things separate for now. But again, it's good if you want to create a simple budget, quick and easy. Then I have snippets page, which is pretty much how you would expect. It's just a place where I keep things like email templates or other things that I find myself typing out multiple times. I would like to improve this, however, and create some kind of automation where I can quickly fill in the variables and copy the snippet to my clipboard. Then I have a reading list, which is self-explanatory. But for this, I was testing out the Notion Web Clipper Chrome extension. So using this, you can quickly turn any website into a readable page. It's not perfect, but I like how fast I can do that and access my reading from any other device. Okay, so lastly, I did want to go over Notion Calendar, which I've been trying out and really liking. And really adding my databases to my daily calendar has been a total game changer. You can pick and choose exactly which databases you want to see. It's pretty simple and easy to use. For one, I like the keyboard shortcut design approach, which makes you work through things much quicker. Also a fan of the availability sharing, which is super intuitive. But I feel like it's a little bit lacking. I wish that it was a two-way integration between your calendars because there isn't any like Apple Watch support or notifications, but I'm sure some of these limitations are already being considered by the Notion team. So maybe we'll see those things in the near future. So that was a pretty comprehensive tour of my entire Notion setup for the new year. And I know I'm constantly mentioning Notion on the channel, but it really is a tool which I'm using daily and I feel like it helps me out a lot. So be sure to check out the links down in the description if you want to try any of these for yourself. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.